Hi, I'm Brian English, Rappler Forum name Hyperbytes, and in this unit I'm going to talk about uh, routing. It's a little bit alien to some people, uh, they don't really understand what it's all about, um, but routing is basically all about making those more unfriendly URLs for your pages into something a little more friendly. It's about hiding the file extensions and allowing you in a more SEO friendly way to be able to pass parameters from one page to another. So what I've got at the moment is I've got just three pre-built pages here and I'm just going to show you how we would traditionally link them and then I'm going to show you the routed method. And then we're going to look at dynamic routing where you're actually going to pass a parameter as well. It is really straightforward. Um, I hope by the end of this you'll suddenly realise that routing is the way to go. It is a much better way than the traditional parameters sharing etc that you would do with a, a get. So let's start with gallery. That's actually an anchor button. So it's a button wrapped in a, an anchor tag and we can with that just click connect that straight through to a file and I'm going to click on the folder icon and we're going to click on gallery and that's going to open up the gallery page when we launch that in a browser so if I launch that now and I click on gallery then there we are boo we get the gallery corp and if you look this is the important bit if you look along the top here um, you will see that the file name is gallery.php, which explains basically what it's going to do, but it, it could be a lot more user friendly than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a root to that particular uh, link to make it a lot more friendly to uh, view. So I'm just going to close that and I'm going to go into the routing panel. I'm going to go into root and I would I just add here, I'm actually in a PHP environment. Uh, so routes have to be manually created. For those who are using Node, of course, if you create a new page through the pages panel, then it will automatically create a route for you. But in this case, um, we're PHP, so we do have to manually create the routes. So I'm going to create a route and we're going to pick the file to which the root is going to point to and you'll see now we have an optional name it is actually optional but it's it, I would suggest it's handy just for you to be able to understand what you're doing the path at the moment would be gallery and it will serve up the gallery.php page and we could change that to whatever I want we want obviously no spaces let's say my gallery we can save that into the roots in the moment I'm just going to quickly explain sensitive simply means case sensitive so um, if the case doesn't match then that won't match the root strict is to me I think the message that it gives allow an optional trailing delimit and a match is actually a little bit misleading because it's actually the reverse of that if you click strict then it must match exactly if you don't have it marked as strict there can be a following slash and that will still match um, and I'll give you an example of that as we as we work through we can ignore methods totally for this the sake of what we're doing at the moment so let's just generate those routing rules and now I'm going to go back into index and remember we created a link there to the file but instead I'm now going to link to via the routing panel and now you'll see that route that we've created is there if we click on that Sorry, it's just jumping, jumping around a little bit there. Um, not quite sure why it's done that. You'll see that we have the root My Gallery. If we save that page now, I want to fire that up in Wappler again. And now if I click Gallery, if you look at what happens up here, you'll see now that 
no no PHP at the end it actually isn't even the file name it is the text that we typed in and you can make that as sophisticated as you want what you really want is for when those um, indexing bots come in from the various search engines like uh, Google and Bing etc you need it to be fairly meaningful in name so that you get a better boost in your SEO so that's how we would do a plain simple um, static route but of course sometimes you need to pass a parameter so in this case I'm going to be using a the who am I file and that will display the name of a particular person um, based on a simple database table that I've created which will has three users in myself Ben and Paul they use as one, two, three other IDs, and we can then display it, the, the particular record based on the query that's been sent. So what we're going to do is we're going to be sending an ID in the same way as we would do with a, a normal PHP, say, page, where we'd have something like um, whoami.php question mark ID equals one. That would be coming from our who am I page here and I'll just actually type that in if if you want just so we can see how that works so we've got who am I PHP query ID equals one so that's going to send the value of one to the who am I page within the who am I page we pick that parameter that ID parameter up by clicking on app query parameters and you can see I've defined that so that will effectively be the post box that that ID value will be shoved into so we can use it within our script we then use a server connect to an action which I've called get me and what get me does is very simple it just does nothing more than gets a single user single single uh, record query with a condition where the user ID is equal to that get value that we passed. So that's fairly straightforward. So we've seen input parameters for that is coming from the this the address bar at the top, the ID equals, and then that in turn will display the name. So if I just save that first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Firstly, I say show you the non-rooted method. So I'm going to go into index. I'm going to fire that up. I'm going to say who am I? And you'll see here. You see it's added that ID equals one at the end that we did. That one has been picked up within the who I am am I page via that query dot ID definition. That's been then passed to the server action, which has then served up the record for person who is ID one, which I'll just show you is me. So if we go into the database, users, view data, you can see that Brian English is user ID one. So we know that we've served up the correct page there. So how do we make that dynamic? Well, we do that simply by creating a completely new route. So I'm going to go back into the routing. I'm going to add a new route. And we're going to obviously route to who am I, PHP. So exactly the same. Give it a name just so we can understand what it is. It's serving up the who am I, PHP page. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a parameter here. And to add a parameter, we put colon and then the name of the parameter. Remember that parameter that we're passing is uh, an ID. So we say who am I forward slash colon ID and that means that when we use that route we'll be able to define that ID dynamically within our call to that so go back into our index PHP click on who am I I want to get rid of that I'm going to call up roots I'm going to 
click who am I and you see when you click that route it automatically gives you the opportunity to put an ID value now normally we would be putting that in from some sort of table repeat um, but for the moment I'm just going to put a fixed value in I'm going to put a fixed value of two so basically what hap is happening here is we should see who user number two is so I'll fire that up again in our browser I'm going to click on who am I and that's not going to work so obviously I need to check it looks like that route hasn't saved who am I anchor button yeah for some reason that hasn't saved let's try that again that's better let's fire that up in our browser click who am I and there we are we are served up Ben who is user 2 and you'll see the URL is totally different there we've got who am I post slash 2 and again we could actually have anything we want in here we could have who um, dash I let's say and that would be exactly that that would serve that up as the dashed version so that's our semi-dynamic route and I say semi-dynamic because we have actually still hard-coded in that parameter um, but that's not actually how we would want to do it we would want to do that dynamically so I'm going to do the here's something I prepared earlier bit I'm going to just unhide the section that I've got written it here I'm going to refresh the screen and you'll see that what I've actually done is just below I put a responsive bootstrap table in and that is simply populated with the three people that are in that users database and I made the IDs a link uh, so they are clickable so that clicking one it should show Brian English clicking two should show Ben clicking three should show Paul but we need to set up those routes so I'm going to click on the first one we're going to go in this is going to be dynamic so we need to do this through dynamic attributes we're going to go into links link routing who am I and then the ID parameter is actually going to be the ID that is in that repeat I am a little bit concerned here because there's actually that is not correct code that WAP let's put in. I'll report that to the team. Because um, that should simply just say ID because it's within a repeat. So there's our dynamic link. So now I'm going to just fire that up. And if I click on one that will show me if I click the two it will show Ben and if I click the three that will show Paul so that's how we set a dyna fully dynamic link uh, I apologize about that little bug that I've just found um, in Wapland say I'll pass that on to the team and uh, that is basically how you use your dam dam route. There's a couple of extra things I want to mention no and I'll, I'll do it with the gallery route because that's nice and simple you can add an optional parameter so you you actually could have more than one code thing here as well but you can add an optional parameter and let's say that parameter is um, say my name And then we follow that with a question mark. And what that says is that that parameter may or may not be present. If it isn't present, don't worry, just display in the normal way. So we can use that basically to, to tag things like maybe a, a title on the end of the URL. So let's say it was a blog post. You might want to tag the heading of that blog post after the ID of it so you might have something like my blog 4 slash 23 which is the 23rd blog in the thing 
and they might want to then say forward slash and perhaps the title of the blog again to improve the SEO that you're doing that and then you, if you went into our page here and to our gallery we don't have a parameter set as you can see but that shouldn't matter because it's an optional parameter but had we put something after that it will accept it and basically it will ignore it because it's an optional parameter that we're not using so it's quite handy for stuffing useful text into a, a URL or if you've got a situation where perhaps you're sending um, an ID for a, a repeat and maybe also a sub repeat but sometimes that sub repeat what the ID will not be there sometimes it will then you can make that second ID optional and then do the code appropriately depending on the value of that lastly I think I would just like to quickly mention the subtle differences if we are in uh, a node environment just purely that this is the same the first the name the path the type the type you can choose page you can actually do um, routes to server connects and redirects and all sorts the biggie is that you also have the layout is specified within that route um, and then obviously you have the methods just in the same way as you uh, had with that so there's a little bit of subtle difference you'll notice also that that um, strict and um, the case based flags are not there in the node environment so basically that's what routing is all about I hope that's cleared it up a little bit for you and uh, I hope to see you in my next video